All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. We're going to be getting started in literally 30 seconds. Staff, staff students, administration, for taking time out to come to this event. Before I get started, my name is Farah Habib, I'm an associate professor of English here at Bristol. Um, and if you need to leave early, please do so quietly. Um, and one other announcement is that uh, you should have received evaluation forms. If you could take a minute or two after at the end to fill out the evaluation, that would be very helpful. Uh, this event is uh, the fifth event in the colloquium series, A More Perfect Union, Bristol Stands Against Hate. Um, and I want to let you know that we have a few other really exciting events coming up uh, as part of the series. Uh, we have a lecture presentation by Professor Mary Arapian, uh, who will be speaking about what can happen if you neglect science, scientific evidence when it comes to, to, comes to global health issues such as climate change and disease. Uh, and that event takes place on March 4th at 9.30 in H210 to 209, which is across the hall from here. So the idea for the colloquium series started in the aftermath of a series of, of hate crimes over the last few years, both here in the United States and abroad. Um, and through this colloquium, we seek to invite Bristol community uh, students, staff, uh, the whole community really, uh, to act on ways to be more aware of what it means to be a part of a diverse world. Most importantly, we hope that these events will inspire people to get along and be willing to speak out when injustice and hatred are served around them. So I'd like to take just a minute to introduce uh, what I've been told is a collective art project started by education and theater students of Professor Atassi and Ledoux. Um, and uh, just a brief introduction of our wonderful directors here and producer. So, Engen Atassi is an associate professor of education and the program coordinator for elementary education. He holds a PhD in social and philosophical foundations of education from the Department of Education, Culture, and Society at the University of Utah. His approach to teaching and research is embedded in a desire for community, love, and equity. David Ledoux is our artistic director and assistant professor of theater. Uh, professor Ledoux was living and working in, uh, professionally in New York City as an actor, director, and theater uh, for the last 15 years. He was hired by Bristol to revamp the theater program. As director, Professor Ledoux's primary goal is to use theater as a tool for <coughs> education, community engagement, and interpersonal uh, understanding. Thank you, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm Engin. I'm David. Hello. Uh, I'll just give a brief uh, history behind this idea, and then maybe talk about some of the good layers of this project, because there's, I think, a lot of rich, good stuff that we can hold on to after today. Uh, the, the history is that I, I've been working and engaged in, in trying to foster some meaningful social change and raise awareness about discrimination and micro, microaggressions in, in educational context. And we've been doing most of that work through perhaps a sociological kind of normative approach. We've done a lot of trainings. And, and I thought, why not explore the, the venue of arts? You know, arts has this, this really significant way of creating these events where we are part of the world, and yet a part of the world. It creates this, this condition of being able to approach these critical ideas and issues from more of an emotional perspective as opposed to a, a normative perspective. I always uh, challenge people to, to think about things that matter to them. You know, when you think about why you love your daughter or why you call your mother when you get out of this place tonight. Uh, you don't do it because it makes sense, right? It's not a, a normative thing. You do it because you love to do it. It makes you feel good. And I think we can approach diversity and issues that are critical, such as microaggressions, from that venue, using arts and the events that art generates to, to talk about the feelings and the emotions that are uh, embedded within these discourses to begin to talk about social justice, equity, and, and other issues. Uh, the second layer that I want to talk about before I get to David, I, know I don't want to take too much time, it is the idea that this gathering, this event, is very unique and I'm very excited about it. It's not the traditional mainstream notion of art. You know, in, in, in the traditional mainstream uh, understanding of art, art is just an object, it's done, it's finished, you consume it, you kind of fetishize it, 
you put it on your bookshelf or you put it on the wall, right? That is a traditional mainstream sense of art. But here, this gathering, this event, is perhaps designed to bring everyone into art and have art become a collective process where we become involved in the creation and development of it. And through that engagement, we also transform and transcend and hopefully uh, seek more progressive change in our lives and in our society. And I'll let you speak to oh, great. Thank you, Engen. Yeah, uh, Engen approached me um, last year uh, to, uh, to think about putting a piece like this together and you know, <coughs> working with him as a colleague and, and hearing him speak and having uh, collaborative you know, meetings with him. I mean, we speak the same language and I think we're on the, the same page about uh, about the role of art and the role of interpersonal engagement and what's really important in finding meaning. So it's really, it's it's really great to find like-minded colleagues uh, of the many that I've found working here. So I really appreciate it, Engen coming to uh, to me uh, with this idea. And uh, this this style of theater is called forum theater, and it was developed by a man named Augusto Boal. He is a Brazilian, or was a Brazilian theater director. Uh, and instead of creating theater as a way to sort of, as Engen said, like here it is, it's done, and now you all can pay a lot of money to come see it and dress up in fancy clothes, and it's done, and you get to sit there inactively and just see what we did. He wanted to do th what he called theater of the oppressed. He wanted to use theater as a tool to go out and work with different populations. So he was going into hospitals and homeless shelters. He was going uh, into prisons. He was going to the people of the world that needed to engage in dialogue and using theater as a tool for that. He won the Nobel Peace Prize um, some years ago shortly before he died uh, in the early 2000s. And his work is really inspiring and has always inspired me. So I was very excited to be able to uh, work on this project uh, to bring this style to all of you. So the idea with this is that uh, you're going to see me be uh, perhaps an uncomfortably uh, oblivious professor. Uh, you're going to see me sort of bear the warts of what's some can happen when you are unaware of your power, your privilege, your biases, uh, and these things can just slip under the radar sometimes. So we have a series of scenes where we're gonna be presenting a classroom situation. Um, it'll be a theater classroom situation, but a classroom situation nonetheless. And then uh, our theater student, Taylor, is going to come in as what Augusto Ball called the Joker. Uh, to sort of facilitate a conversation about ways that we can strategize to uh, combat this, these moments of disempowerment. And then we will take your suggestions, we'll, we'll engage in a little dialogue, and we'll try them out. This is a laboratory. This is an opportunity for you to brainstorm and come up with ideas and see if, and see how it will work. Uh, as Augusto Boal said, this is a quote that's taken on through through all the theater students, they love the quote that he said, uh, theater is not revolutionary, but it is a rehearsal for the revolution. Uh, so if we want to change the world, then art can be a way to at least rehearse what that might look like, which I think is really beautiful. Um, anything else that I wanted to talk about? Um, no, that's it. So let's get warmed up. You are now all not just audience members. You are what Augusto Boal would call spect actors, okay? So you are going to be a part of this dialogue. So I would love you to just turn to a neighbor, turn to somebody. If you want to talk to somebody you know, fine. Introduce yourself. Yeah, share a little something about you. All right. So now we're gonna we're gonna start really really simple, okay? I want you. You're just gonna count to three together, and I'll demonstrate. It couldn't be easier. We all know how to count to three. So I'm gonna take one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Couldn't be easier, right? Go ahead. Count to three with your partner. One, two, three. 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 All right, all right, all right, all right, good. Now, 
Uh, now I want the two person to substitute a sound or a word, okay? So I'll be one, you be two. So you substitute a word. Just think got of whatever. It. Okay, you got it. One. Syllabus. Two. Uh, <laughs> that syllabus, man. <laughs> one. Syllabus. Three. One. Syllabus. Three. One. Syllabus. Three. One. Syllabus. Three. All right, okay. Let's see how that goes now. Go ahead. <laughs> So now you can see where this is heading. You can see where this is heading. Now three substitute a word. Okay? So uh okay, here we go. One syllabus. Pop. One. Syllabus. Pop. One. Syllabus. Pop. One. Syllabus. Pop. Alright, there we go. All right, good, 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 good. I hope that's going well for you. Now I think you can tell where this is heading. So replace one with some word. Uh, crabgrass. Syllabus. Pot. Crabgrass. Syllabus. Pop. Crabgrass. Syllabus. Pop. All right. Go ahead. All right. Good. All right. So that, uh, that was the first. That's the first foray into being a spectacular. Give yourselves a round of applause. That's our first team. Good. Now, say goodbye to your new best friend. Say goodbye. And turn to somebody else and, to, and to introduce yourself to someone else. And now, I want you to just have. Now I want you to just have a quick story. Share a quick story about uh, a, what, or not a story, no. I want you to discuss what you think a microaggression is. Have a little conversation. What do you think a microaggression is? Go ahead. Like at first you think that's good, then you really like, you know, fun out. You know, and so I think it's kind of background. Anybody, anybody hear anything surprising, interesting, mind-blowing, inspiring? Anybody say anything that you weren't expecting to say that was particularly mind-blowing? Like, oh, it came out of my head. Yes. Uh, my guy Abdul over there was saying uh, that it's like if someone's lack of experience can make you treat other people differently uh, in a negative way. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. 
Yeah. Um, um, I, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I mentioned that for somebody who's experiencing a microaggression, it can be stressful to discern when not to mention something because you might seem like you're overreacting or like freaking out over something small. So yes. it's like, do I say something or do I just let it happen? Yes. So yes. yes. Oh, okay. We are sharing a brain today. Yeah, <laughs> good. And, and what, what were you going to say? Um, it's kind of like passive aggressive comments that you make, uh, that someone makes about a different person, you know? They, or just someone that they kind of don't like, or like, like I had some friends who would, they were friends, but then they got like stuff happened and they were like passive aggressive comments. I'm like, can, I, can we not? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. It's very small things that you can do that Yeah. Um, that you can that you can't particularly pick out. And it's if you call, like, like um, someone was saying over there, if you if you call someone out for it, they'd be like, oh, you're overreacting. It was not nothing. But it's something that adds up over time that if someone does it constantly enough, you'll start getting negative feeling towards them. But there's not one thing in particular that you can pick out. That's a great place to end with, or to transition into, if it adds up over time. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about this. Uh, uh, we'll present our, our little situation here. And we're not trying to suggest that one microaggression can derail a person's entire life, but the accumulation of these messages can get into somebody's consciousness and affect the choices that they make. So that's what we're really trying to explore here. So this is awesome. This is so great. Continue to be thinking and engaging with what you see up here and then we'll, uh, we'll have a little conversation afterwards about some possibilities for ways to combat these. So that was the second scene. Give yourself a round of applause. Very good. All right. And here is our foreign theater piece. All right. Okay, everybody come on over. I got some notes, so I just have to see over here. Uh, I got to get through a bunch of, or not a bunch of notes, but some key notes. Then you're going to break apart, work on your scenes. We'll come back and we'll do a full run through. Okay. Yeah, not, not now, Jordan. I don't have time. I don't have time for you to derail the whole thing. Okay. No jokes. Just listen. I got a lot to get through. Um, okay. When you two walk in together, I need to know what your relationship is, especially your relationship to him. Okay. Her. Sorry, okay. I need to know what your relationship is to her, okay? Um, Sorry. Sorry about that. I know, I, I let you know. Brianna, no. Need... Stop. Stop. Yeah, but I just, No, Brianna, seriously, I, just don't I, talk back. Listen, you're, uh, if you're on time, you're late. You need to be early, and then you're on time, okay? I get that. But That's you why act I, like I, this, and you talk I, back like this, if I, you're just I, not going to cut it in the real world, okay? You're in a little bubble here, and that's great, but in the real world, nobody's gonna deal with that, okay? Sorry about that, David. What's the matter, dude? Come on, let's go. Are you serious? You're not gonna... Uh, that's Brianna, such a double standard, though. Enough! Stop! Okay, moving on. Um, okay, so, wh where was I? You two, uh, I need to know what your relationship is to, to him, okay? Her, David. <sighs> to her, okay, sir. Um, David, David, David. It's, it's Jordan, um, seriously, it's I got so hey, much David. to get through. I, Everybody's got a question. Love yeah, it. so what is your dream role? I, that's not relevant right now. Yes, I, I mean, I would, uh, I, uh, I mean, everybody wants to play Hamlet, you know? That's a choice. Okay. 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 Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, 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 you two uh, are... are you and you and him, uh, her, whatever. Uh, your relationship. Oh, Mike. When you entered for your last moment, you were being really motivated by the the urgency of the situation. Okay. So just relax into that. Breathe and let's you know. Don't try to recreate that. Just really breathe and and let it happen. Okay. okay? All right. Um, Okay, so that, those are the key ones. Everybody break into your groups, work your scenes, then we'll come back and I'll have some more notes, okay? David, David, okay, before we go. I just really wanted some uh, some notes on the monologues I was doing. I don't really feel like what I was doing, like it meant something, you know? Like I, there felt like there was something missing. Jordan, it's fine, it's fine. You're doing you're doing great. If I have a note, I'll give it to you, okay? okay. Uh, did you get a chance to read the, the standard routine I sent you? 
I mean, it probably sounds better when I when I speak it, but I I, I wanted some notes on that. And honestly, I don't have time for that right now. We got to get this show up. I don't have All time. Right. For, but do you do you have office hours I could come to? Uh, like, I, I I just really want your opinion before I go out and I I speak it because okay. sometimes look, I just feel like it's my, my words aren't worth anything. Like people weren't look, don't want to hear what I have to say. You, you know, you want to know what the, the, the real issue is. Yeah. You know, you you come in and you're always derailing things. You're making jokes. You're asking questions that take me I'm off into a million different things. Trying to derail things, but. You, I know that your background, where you come from, your family, your I know you don't take education seriously and you kind of just laugh it off. I, I, I'm not trying to do serious work okay? here, David. It's, it's serious work. So if you prove yourself, then I'll listen to you, okay? You come to office hours. Right, right. When, are you, when are your office hours next? Can I come? Uh, 9 o'clock on, on, on Tuesday. Tuesday? Okay, so once the show ends, then, then we can, okay? Oh, okay. All right. Oh, but I, I needed to talk to Heidi. Heidi, uh, yeah. you know, are you enjoying this? our disabled guy, okay? He drops a pen, you you are standing right there, he's bending, he could have fallen over. Like, you have to be conscious of the ensemble. You have to be aware of everybody. Corey's our disabled actor, you need to be listening and, 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 and help him, okay? Sorry, sorry, Jump sorry, in to sorry, help him. Sorry, now give him the pen back, the pencil. Sorry about that. It's okay. Hey, uh, David, I was thinking about trying out for the lead role. Yeah. I mean, reading through the play, I really think my character fits. Yeah? You wrote the lead? Yeah, yeah. Wow, great. What? You read the whole play? Yeah, I read the whole play. Great, good. Okay. Hey guys, Matt read the whole play for a change. No shit! Hey! Yeah. 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 Good, good. I thought you were going to need like accommodations or something, but you, you, you got through it. No, yeah, I, I, I read the play. I think it's, I'm going to be grateful. Yeah, you. you should come out and audition. That's great. Good. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to see that. Yeah, I was uh, overheard Matt before. He was telling me he was going for the lead or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, any, uh, well, anybody can audition for for whatever they want. But you're auditioning, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Because you know, I mean, it's Matt. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Five years later. <laughs> you. How are you? I'm I'm good, thanks. I'm on break, you know. You work here? Oh, well, I mean, not here at the food court. I work at the Sunglasses Hut. Oh, cool. Yeah. How's the theater going? Oh, um, you know, I don't really do that anymore. Oh, but what about the Glass Horse Project? Oh, I gave it to Taylor and she ran with it. Like, it got, it got really hard to be the disabled actor. So, you, you know, I, but anyway. What about you? What are you doing? It's I been so it, long. Yeah, I made it big in showbiz. You're I'm kidding. What movies. are you doing? Like student films or I'm indies? Actually, I'm a cam girl. Oh, you mean... Yeah, I take my clothes out for money, but it's totally okay. I love it. These guys, my customers, I just have to smile for them and they're putty in my hands. Sir, you can't be smoking out here. Oh, uh, all right, man, I'll... Matt? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it, to. It's, it's whatever, it, it doesn't matter, man. I, I don't go by that anymore. Oh, yeah. Anyway, you know, what's up with you? How, how are you doing? What are you doing right uh, now? You know, I was kind of a fuck up, so I dropped out of school. You know, I've been working here at Five Below. That, that kind of suits me better, I think, so. Uh, um, yeah. I, I gotta go. I, 
Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. I gotta get back to that. Nice seeing you. Okay. Yep. See ya. Brianna? Brianna Rosario? Jordan? <laughs> How are you? I've been good. What's been going on? You, you came here the, the first semester and you fell off the face of the earth. What happened? Life just got busy. I had to take care of my niece and everything. You should have said yeah. something. I'm sure you could have worked something out. Yeah, right. Not really. I, I tried, but I, just, I guess I just couldn't cut it. Well, what do you have to? Oh, you know, uh, I'm just, uh, uh, my sister is coming here uh, for school. She heard about all the theater things I did. Oh, I'm sure you know, I that around, too. I just, really? Yeah. I just, I just got a, a promotion at Target. And what, about, what about your comedy thing? I remember you were doing that. How'd that uh, go? No, no, no. Nobody wants to hear what comes out of this mouth. <laughs> this what do you nonsense. Mean? No, but ever since I live rent free, my mom, but like, you know, everything's good. But did you hear about Mike? Oh my god. Oh my yeah. Five I Oscars. I see that movie Wonder later. Boy right there, right? Yeah. Well, I gotta go. I'm gonna be late. But All right, yeah. Okay. Good seeing you. Is there something wrong here? Mm hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. maybe. Just maybe? Just a bit. There's a bit wrong here. I think there, is there more than a bit wrong here? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, what's going on here? What's happening? You're the fucking asshole. <laughs> 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 well, the bluntness. Sorry. So, so, David is being an asshole, and how is he being an asshole? With microaggressions towards everyone. Microaggressions. Oh, it's almost like we're here for this. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I think that uh, now we have an opportunity to go back, take another look at these scenes, and give the students strategies or tactics to combat these microaggressions that David's throwing out there. Mm -hmm. And as David said, we're not trying to suggest that one instance can ruin someone's life, but enough of these things over the course of five years, said by enough different people, can really affect your life in a negative way. Um, so is there a scene here that particularly resonated with any of you? We might take a look at again. I know, I, where is he? There he is, Jordan. <laughs> um, in his scene, I've been dismissed by teachers before who just didn't understand that I just wanted help. Um, and, Brianna's situation, I'm late quite often myself. <laughs> um, so being told you're not going to cut it if you're a couple minutes late, even if you let them know. So what, I want to hear from you guys though. What's something that, that resonated? Oh, come on, there's got to be one. <laughs> I think when he was questioning whether or not he read the whole play. Oh, so I think he situation. wasn't able to, yeah. Okay, good. thank you for that. Let's give her a quick round of applause for you. <laughs> The part where he said, I know your your people don't take education seriously. Ooh, yes. <laughs> ugly, yes. Um, all right, so we've got a couple here. Oh, man, we've got them. They talked to uh, Heidi and said that you have a smile that will make men putty into men's uh, into putty. Yeah. And apparently she then becomes Pole dancer or something like that? Uh, I believe it's called a cam girl. It's essentially pole dancing on the internet. He's <laughs> <laughs> uh, not sure that that what he meant when he was talking to her, but in a way that was an uninvited uh, comment. Exactly. She didn't come to him and say, you know, I'd like to know how to do a, a, an interview with Right. Um, she people not said, hey, this smile at men. And you know something? Most women I think thought that he was kidding. Maybe, I mean I, I have to say as a woman, it's that is like when said that like you need to smile, just that period. Mm -hmm. Every woman I've ever known mm -hmm. has been told that multiple mm -hmm. times. So that just mm -hmm. that is so like So let's look at that. How about we look at that one? Let's take a look at that one. And uh, <laughs> well, are there any suggestions that how Heidi might have handled that? Yeah. Do we have any suggestions as how Heidi can combat David's microaggression there? No, we don't. I think, I think one thing is you were when you were assuming that when she was going to go to an audition, it was going to be for men. Um, so I think that was one thing that you could say, oh, so you're assuming that like that woman can't be producer, woman can't be high up in theater and film. Um, I would just also say that that's not any of the concern, I didn't ask for that. All right, cool. So, um, thank you, Abby. Uh, so, Heidi, I want you to uh, tell David that uh, 
you know, it, it's not really his concern. And also, there, what if there's female producers out there? They're not all going to be male, right? Um, and uh, thank you, Abby. Yeah, so is, Abby that, uh, is, it, is that accurate, Abby? Like, uh, uh, it's, it's really none of your business, and uh, and there, there are, could be female uh, casting directors. Are those the two kind of central things? Those are very important things. Okay, yeah. great, great. Yeah, yeah. perfect. All right, uh, can we get a round of applause yes. for Abby real quick? Do you want us to just start from the beginning of that conversation? Yes. All right. I'm guessing what I'm saying already before. Okay. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. And. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, Heidi. Heidi. Um, so I. Uh, I just want to talk to you real quick. Are, are you enjoying this class? The yeah. rehearsal process? Yeah. You are. Is, is, is nothing wrong? Is nothing wrong? No, it's great. I like it. Good. Good. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. It's, it's just a small thing. I mean, it's, it's not just a small thing, but it's, you know. You're such a pretty face. If you, if you smile, you just light up your face, and I, I, I think I, I think it would be really powerful for you. And honestly, it's not just here. When you get out in the real world, you go into a job interview, you smile, you light up the room. Those guys who are going to be giving you a job, you'll be putty in their hands, right? Okay. Well, I don't really think that's your business to comment on, David. And I could be getting interviewed by females, also, not just men. Yeah, you could. You could get interviewed by females, but honestly, I mean, we know the patriarchy. It's a man's world. You still have to deal with the unequal social situation that we have. And it is my business because I'm your teacher, and I would be irresponsible if I didn't give you the skills you need to go out into the real world. So you know, I. I I understand what you're saying, but honestly, I think this is something you really need to look at. Thanks, David. All righty, what happened there? It wasn't much better. It wasn't much better. Palmer, you had something? David's pretty much making it seem like being able to frame yourself to attract a male presence is a professional skill in the acting world when it's not. It's right, same. yeah, exactly. So is there something else we can give Heidi that she can... No, because it's fucking David's fault. <laughs> well, right, yeah, but we, we can't always change the, the teacher in the situation. We can't change the person who's in power. But what it, we would can be, do, it would be great, right? It, it would be, be magical yeah. if we could change the oppressor. You know, it would be a magical situation. But uh, that's what Augusto Bilal said. We're not looking for the magic. We're looking for uh, a chance to really throw stuff against the wall and see how we can deal with the ugly, complicated stuff that happens out there, you know? Right, sorry. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, oh, and then right there at the bottom. Uh, what would have happened if she had given you the line that uh, you keep this up, Professor, and report you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's a good suggestion. Any um, also, I kind of deal with this in a way, just telling him, this is just my neutral, this is my wrestling expression. And I appreciate your concern, but this is just who I am as a person. And there are several successful actors that have a similar expression that I do, and they still work very well. Great, there we go. Um, also, I just want to clarify real quick. If anybody finds a point where uh, they want to say freeze and stop it and throw out another suggestion, just yell freeze. Yep. <laughs> I also don't think that he would say that to a guy. I think that's an important point that there are other people in the class that don't always look super happy, and he's not pointing that out to them. Mm -hmm. So we have three suggestions yeah, here. Which which one should uh, go? Well, Bob was the first. The over there. So yeah. let's let's stick with Bob and then let's see what happens. Uh, so the the threat, right? Yeah, right. The, I'm going to report you. I'm going to report you. For the and where would you like us to start from? Right from the beginning, or well, start where she's getting pissed off. Okay, so let's start from Smile. Okay, okay, good. And uh, then we'll give a couple of these other suggestions to try. You know, it's, it's, it's a little thing, but it's not really a little thing. I think it'll really help you. If you have such a pretty face, if you'd smile, it would light up your face, and I think you'd be surprised. Like, you know, for the future, when you go into a job interview, these guys who are giving you a job, you know, uh, you'll be cutting your hands. You smile, you light up the room. I, I think you'll find it's going to be really powerful. You know, David, I don't appreciate your comments, and I'm going to report you. I'm actually going to go right now. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 What do you mean you're going to report you? For, for giving you a professional, uh, professional note? You're commenting on my appearance. I, I'm commenting on your behavior. Your behavior is a part of how you present yourself professionally in the world. If you were to come in here, if you were to come in here, uh, I don't know, like yelling at me, or uh, if you're like, 
you know, if you're chewing gum, I would say don't chew gum. That's not professional. If your hair was a mess, I'd say you know maybe you need to fix your hair. If you, uh, you know, if you if you were wearing clothes that weren't professional or appropriate praise. for a job interview, yeah, praise. Can we incorporate the second um, recommendation in terms of saying how can we've never said this to one of your male classmates? We absolutely can. Would you like them to continue from the yeah, same point? Yeah, same spot. Perfect. And. Um, and you know, so if you were uh, exhibiting that type of behavior and I didn't think it was professional, then I would be irresponsible. Okay, David, but this is my neutral face and there's plenty of people in this class that don't smile, especially men, and I haven't heard you comment on their smile ever. Well, honestly, I mean, I am dealing with everybody as an individual. So if, you know, I'm getting this, this energy from you, I get different energy from other people. I mean, you know, I, I Jordan's always telling jokes, so I, you know, I deal with that. He's always derailing things, and I, you know, everybody's an individual that, that we need to deal with, and that's, you know, that's what's important. I, you know, taking a, a personal view of education. There are some teachers who just kind of like give up. Yeah, freeze over here. Whilst I appreciate your concern about my future, I would rather hear feedback on my acting skills or things that will actually help me in the future because me smiling isn't going to make or break me. That's great. Same spot. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take it from there. Make it your own. Um, yeah. So I would be irresponsible. Uh, there are some teachers who just give a blanket. You know, uh, they treat every student the same. I like to take a personal. Well, no, I appreciate your feedback, but I would prefer if your feedback was on my acting ability and not my appearance, because my smile is not going to make me or break me in the real world. Okay, well, you know, that's your point of view. I'll give you what I'll, I'll give you what I have to offer. All I all I know is my personal experience. Uh, I'll give you what I have to offer. You can take the note or not take that's the note. That's your only note. Smile. Okay. I, I'll have other notes, but that's my one right now. So I suggest you listen to it. Breathe. Right. And, 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 and the thing is, at this point, I would be if I were hiding, I would be very worried about what grade you're going to give me, David, because I've just challenged you to your very core. I don't know if, I mean, I, I think that if you're a nice guy, like I know you are, if this is the way it would. But I've had professors who, at this point, would be about to write in the grade book F and ask me to leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I, I just don't know that this is all realistic. Even if it's not realistic, if this were to happen in the real world, do I need to be an aggressive, ag aggressive bully for this still to be a moment of disempowerment? No. 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 This is still inappropriate, even though I'm framing it as a nice guy. Even though I'm touchy feely, oh, I have a personal approach, I'm still disempowering her, I'm not really listening to her. So I don't, I don't know if we need to be aggressive, aggressive to, for it to be a person. See, Abby, first component. I would say this is actually pretty realistic from things that I've experienced before because I've definitely had teachers that were um, sexist or they just didn't like me for whatever reason and I absolutely would stick up for them and I've made it very clear that if they decided to um, treat me differently because I advocated for myself that I would be taking legal action. And me personally, I'm a very aggressive and um, straightforward individual and I think um, more and more uh, people in general, especially females, are becoming that way. So I think um, her standing up for herself is a very reasonable thing, in my eyes. I don't, I don't disagree that it's a reasonable thing, but what I have a problem with is that she's walking down an area where he has all the power. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's, so and that's, that's the whole problem. That's, yeah, the thing. That's, and that's the crux. This is crux actually it. a great segue. Um, thank you, Heidi. Can we give Heidi a round of applause? Thank you all of you for your suggestion. Very nice. Very good. Now, uh, I think we can take this opportunity to look at another one of these scenes and see how we can help that student. And of course, we're never going to be able to solve the problem. But maybe we can find things that will make it easier. Right? So is there another scene here that really resonated with somebody that we can throw? Huh? Um, the part where he says that your people don't take education seriously. Awesome. Is that with Jordan scene, right? Awesome. And uh, what was your name? Haley. Haley. All right. Can we get a round of applause for Haley? Let's, uh, let's just review that scene real quick. We'll have Jordan and David go through it. Uh, David, I just really wanted to talk to you about uh, my monologue and yeah. if there's any notes because I feel like there's something missing and I, I, I want 
yeah, to make no, it listen, better. I'm you know? honestly, but like, it's, it's, it's fine. You do, you're, doing, you're doing fine. If I have notes, I'll give them to you, okay. uh, but you're, you, you're doing fine. All right, uh, did you get a chance to read the stand-up I had? Uh, uh, I'm sure it, it sounds better when I, when I say no, it. No, honestly, it. like this show is, I, I, you know, yeah, I, I, midterms. Yeah, I, I get it, I get it. I just, I, I really want to get it up. I want to get it on its feet and out in the world before before the show goes on. So I, I really wanted to, honestly, are there Jordan, office hours I could come to you and? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can come after the show. But honestly, look, the one thing. Are you sure I can, couldn't come before the show? The one thing that I have to say to you is, you know, you're always coming in here derailing things and asking questions, taking me off into a million different areas. It's just so distracting. I'm not trying to derail things. And I, I know I'm that really, your I'm people, trying to ask your, 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 your family, your friends, I know the background where you come from. I know that uh, education is not, uh, you know, it's a joke to you. Freeze. I, how could he get away with that? How could he get away with it? I know where you come from. I, I know and that, that's a code word. Right. So code for what? what so so what what can Jordan do to, to combat that that code word? To combat the subtle racism there? I think you should ask, where do I come from? Where do you think that I come from? Ooh, there we go. Alrighty, I like it. So Jordan, yeah. ask uh, ask him where he thinks you come from. Sure. And uh, where would you like us to start from? Um where? So I'm about where, where, yeah, where right, you come from. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so look, I know the one big note I have is I know that where you come from, I know your your, your people, your family, your where, friends. Where do I, I come from, I, David? I'm cultural. I, I, I know that, you know, you My culture here. is here, though. I, I, you're from America. I'm from America. That's we're, we're from, cut from the same cloth. Like I don't. Okay. I don't okay. understand how we're that different. Look, you come in here. You're cracking jokes all the time. I see you with your friends. High five, and, 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 and Yeah, like. What does that have to do with my culture? There you go. Let's go right from there. Uh, I, I see you. I see how you hang out with your friends. You high five, and it's, it's all. Okay, cool. what does that have to do with my culture? I'm sure you did the same thing when well, you were my age. You high five your friends. No, you I was. I was. I, I was. Good student. I was dedicated. You I didn't dedicated. high five your friends. Not as like, uh, oh, I'm fucking around. I'm, I'm joking around. No, no. I, I was serious. I, and I didn't derail conversation. I mean, you were always coming in here and, and asking all sorts of crazy questions. Okay, I don't understand what that has to do with me being whatever I am, though. What does that mean, being whatever? Whatever I am. I don't know. What, what does it mean to you? You got free. I would say, how does me asking questions and trying to get more knowledge about what you're speaking about mean that I and not taking things seriously. I would assume that that would mean that I'm taking things more seriously because I'm not fully understanding what you're saying. And I would like to have more information about the topic. That's not me um, fooling around. I'm just trying to know exactly what you're speaking about. All right. So Jordan, really, really try to get them to understand that. And uh, same spot? Yeah. Begin. From the beginning. So your your culture, your people. I know you don't take it seriously. I, but I, but I'm, I'm really trying to ask serious questions, and that that's isn't that me being a better student and trying to get more information from you, as much information as I can. So how does that make me the one who's fooling around and derailing things when I'm trying to get more information from you? Because I I love all the information you're giving me, and I and I want more. So how does that make me the bad guy of the I'm I'm a disruption in the class? Jordan, do you really not know what I'm talking about? No. You, you, you don't come in here and, and you don't crack jokes and you don't like distract and you don't ask about all sorts of crazy do things. You, do you see anybody else constantly raising their hand trying to ask questions, trying to get more information? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, people trying to get more about the, yeah. the work that we're What do you think here. I've been doing? Trying to get more information? Well, now you're doing it, and now you're trying to characterize me as the bad now guy. Now I'm doing because what? Because there's one time. What am I doing? Out of the, every time we've interacted where you're actually taking it seriously. Maybe if you feel like a bad guy, then you probably are the able one. Ooh, all righty. So, right there. <laughs> so from, uh, you're trying to make me feel like a bad guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know you come in here, you try, you try to make me feel like a bad guy here, but really then maybe you are. Maybe you are the bad guy if you feel that way. Uh, I don't think so. I think that you are playing the victim right now, and you're characterizing. I'm not playing the victim. I'm just telling you what you're doing right, or me and listen. how. It's done. Free, free too. I think you're characterizing him. I think I think you're stereotyping him. So I would say something like, "You're you're putting me in a box." Uh, you say I'm putting you in a box, but you're putting me in a box. You're saying because of my appearance and how I look to you, because uh, me asking questions and me interacting with my classmates is me fooling around and not being serious. Yeah. 
Double freeze. <laughs> that now can progress into not only microaggression, but actual aggression, and they're throwing ad hominems at each other. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they're that arguing that and happen. insulting each other. Yeah. Um, mm. So. We have the tactics. Yeah. We have the there, tactics there's something to sort else of, that he can do. Yeah. Other than the sort of like escalation of work by is there yeah. any other tactics? So I was thinking maybe like from the beginning you he could say that maybe he feels that there is some prejudice and that from now on he would appreciate if there was less judgment about his high fiving and more judgment like more thought about like the actual questions that he's asking. Right, you know, and you seem pretty pretty passionate about this one. Do you want to come up and maybe give it a try from Jordan shoes? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to sit there and I can and I can do the scene with you? No. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Figured I'd throw it out there. Um, all right, Jordan. So, uh, so can can you just repeat yeah, that real quick? That real quick. So basically, I feel like he should say kind of like let's let's have a clean slate. Okay. So I feel that there's some discrimination or prejudice that you have against me. So from now on, can we try to see past that? Like, I'm the same as you. You've already, you've already discussed that. You have, there's no cultural difference between you that's causing any issues. So let's just move past that. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. Great. So give that a try. Look, David, I... <laughs> This feels like it's coming from a place of prejudice, and, and I, I just, I, from now on, can we just try and move past it? I, I just, don't, I don't want to blow this out of proportion, and I, I, just, can, I can we, can we just please make Jordan, this, this is about the questions I ask? Listen, I don't see color, okay? I don't even see your race right now. Uh, I see this student, okay? I see your race I, right I, now. And I, well then, I, you know, I, I'm not built that way. I don't see race, okay? I see you. I see you interacting with your stu with the, with the other students. Okay, but and, and can, can we make can we make this issue first? Oh, we got a freeze over. I have a question. Yeah. In the end of that, I don't see color. I you know you treat everyone the same. So yeah. Where is his being treated the same? Right. What's it? I'm sorry. Oh. So the end of oh. that, um, I see. I don't see color. Yeah. I treat everyone the same, but he's not treating him the same, is he? So where's yeah. the end of that? So I don't see color, but he didn't treat him the same. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, but I feel like he's like call him out on that. Yeah, by like he's trying to make it seem like well, I don't see any. Like, you're, I'm just seeing a student who's disrupting and derailing us. So like I don't see any color. Like this, this, this. I feel like it's like so hard to dig at it because he's like laying over a cover of niceness and like like, like I don't have anything to do with it. Oh, oh back route. Oh yeah. Right. Right. Um, as he's saying that he doesn't see color, then that's what a good opportunity for him to say and he really doesn't see me. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I do want to hear from everybody. Uh, so, I'm trying to say something very similar to this school, which regarding that, that always, like, just say, I just want to start the new slate and move forward and just leave. Right. They're like, right, right. Cool, and then I think I saw a couple hands over there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's, uh, you don't see color, you don't see me. Let's give that a go. Listen, David, I, it, whether you're prejudiced or not, and you say you don't see color, what, then that just means you don't see me as a person. No, that's ridiculous. Of course I see you. I see, I, I see how you act, I see your behavior. Okay, but you're, but you're saying you treat everybody the same, and you're not treating me the same as everybody because you're, you're you're being more harsh on me, and I really don't appreciate that as a student. You, you say that my culture is what's causing me to act the way I am, but you say you don't see color. So what are you seeing? There we go. Right in there. So you you say that my culture is making me act this way, but you also say, on the other hand, you say that you don't see color. So what's making what's the driving force here. What's what's driving this? Uh, okay, we're, act, we're getting into the whole thing. We're getting into the whole thing right now. I don't have. Look, everybody's rehearsing. We got to get back. Like we we got to get back to doing the show. So we can talk about this later. Freeze. Okay. Uh, David, even if we can't talk about this right now, this has been really affecting my rehearsal, and it's making this a really negative environment for me. And I think we need to assess it. There we go. Take it from there. Uh, David, I just. 
really think that this is it's becoming a negative environment for me. And I, I really think we need to regroup and make it a more positive space for people. And, and Okay. I, I, mean, I need your help to do that, though. Okay, well, I, mean, I need you to look, make an honest effort to try and do better. Okay, you're and, just, I, I'm on board with that. Absolutely. Please. Absolutely. So that means that I'm going to hold your feet to the fire and make sure that you stay on task, do your work, and, you know, can, can we agree? I'll, you know, whatever you see from me, fine, but Grace. I'm also going <laughs> to... So I think that if, if you're holding him accountable, then he needs to say, okay, that's fine. But I'm also gonna I'm gonna point out any time that I feel you're discriminating against me because of my culture. All right. Cool. And uh, I saw your hand. Dylan's in the same vein. Same okay. vein. All righty. So let's do that. I'm I'm gonna hold your feet to the fire, and okay. you know, and I'm gonna expect that you do the work. All right. Then, then I hope you expect me to hold you accountable if I if I feel discriminated against uh, from you. Well, okay. Because you're not gonna feel discriminated against because I'm not. I'm well, not you prejudiced. may feel that way, but I, it's. <laughs> What I feel and how you think I'm going to feel okay, two different well, things. Hey, so. we got a lot of work to do. Agree to disagree. I have no prejudice Please. in my heart. You don't get to dismiss my feelings. If we're going to be working together, then we need to acknowledge our issues and come past them. Let's go. Agree to disagree, but you know, uh, we'll, we'll we'll get back to work. Okay. And, uh, All right. But you also don't get to dismiss my feelings. Okay. I, I get to feel the way I I feel, and we just. Yes, you get to feel the way that you feel. Yeah, right. absolutely. You get to feel the way that you feel. But I need, I need to know that you're not gonna hinder that and and make me feel bad for feeling discriminated against. Uh, look, I, it's, it's gonna be a case by case basis, okay? And I'm not, I'll, I'll never discriminate against you. I'll never pre be prejudiced against you. I'm gonna respond to your behavior, okay? So that's it. Let's get back to work. Great. Okay. All right. At this point, if I were Jordan, I would turn away the conversation being over and let her remember my breath. Right. Um, which is, is a reaction many people have, um, and that's a that's a good segue. Yeah. After we hear what. Um, yeah. Did you, Jordan, say something along the lines of we are all different people and we all have different life experiences? So for you to judge how I'm reacting and how I'm feeling based on your own life experiences is meaningless. Mm -hmm. yeah. so let's give that a try. And I think we'll take a look at another scene. Um, so, you know, uh, agree to disagree. All right, let's get back to work. I just, I just want to say this one last thing. So we both have different life experiences. Everybody has different life experiences. So I think it's ridiculous for you to, to explain how I should feel based on your life experiences when they're not the same. And so I feel like that you should give me the respect to bring my own conclusions to look, look, my I, feelings and about Jordan, certain situations. I respect everybody in this room. I respect you and I know that you have your experiences, I have my experiences, but I'm just talking about what I see when you are, uh, your behavior in the room, in the classroom, with your friends, I, I'm talking about that, right? So whatever your experiences are. Freeze. I gotta add on to that. So um, can you just um, entertain the thought that perhaps um, you think that you are just objectively responding to things, but can you entertain the thought that of course um, that is colored by your own viewpoints I don't want to say prejudices because you're going to deny it, David. Would <laughs> <laughs> you like to step in? And no. Take the <laughs> no one's taking the offer today. Okay. <laughs> so, so, put that, that on there. so can you just can can you just take a step back and objectively look at yourself? Is kind of what you're saying? Yeah. 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 yeah I, I think we had this moment when we were rehearsing. Similar scenario. Uh, we entertained the idea of an ally. And you've been trying to invite folks to come and join. I don't know if I'm shooting myself in the leg, but maybe. Would you like to be that ally? <laughs> come on, come on, yeah. Yeah. Considering the, the power dynamic, maybe he does need an ally. And I'm not trying to like uh, make it seem like students are completely uh, docile and they just need to lay down and seek allies. But certain moments, I think, it could create a different dialogue. So you're maybe you're a fellow actor, 
in fellow the class. Student, fellow, fellow student, student. Yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe you're yeah. one of my favorite, you know. Yeah, I, that's why I thought maybe you could. Mike. Mike. Oh, oh, maybe Mike. Mike. Yeah, 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 maybe Mike. Good yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 Okay, so Mike, why don't you have a seat over there, and then uh, and then you go ahead and you call call him over as a as an ally. Like, am I am I crazy here? You know? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. So agree to disagree. Uh, you know, and you just have to look. I'm responding to the behavior that I see. You know, but I feel like. Mike, Mike, can you come here, please? Yeah. I feel like I'm exhibiting some of the same behavior that Mike has because he asks a lot of questions, and I'm just—I feel like you don't treat us the same. And yeah, like, Mike asks questions, but they're on topic. So, but you don't even give me the opportunity to ask on-topic questions. You just dismiss me. Well, because I know what you're good because you've exhibited. Am I, am I crazy in the past? Do I do that? When it's two against one, so thanks, Mike. <laughs> so it's an ugly world out there. You don't know. Just, just step over. You don't know. So, so that went south. But let's see what happens if you are an ally. Let's make it more difficult on me. Right? <laughs> But that was actually, sorry, before we start, that, that was a really good impulse that Mike had. Uh, because as a theater person, you always want to make the conflict much more difficult. That's what I always tell them. That's what I did. <laughs> it's just a dinner for Jordan. Um, okay, good. <laughs> um, so, you know what? I agree to disagree. I'm just responding to your behavior, right? Yeah, so, but I, I feel like, so. I, I, I ask a lot of questions, but I feel like... Yeah, you well, like Mike, Mike, can you come here, please? So I feel like I, I exude a lot of the same behaviors as Mike, and where I ask a lot of questions, he asks a lot of questions, but you don't even give me the opportunity. Well, Mike asks questions that are on topic. But you don't give me that opportunity. It's it's because I crazy? know. I mean, David, I hate to say it, but like, I have some pretty whack questions myself. <laughs> Look, look, I, I, I don't know what you two are doing right now. I don't know where this is coming from, but uh, Mike, usually, you, you come to my office hours, you talk to me, you care about the work. And I'm, so I'm trying to come to your I'm, I'm trying to come now to your office. Now you're doing it. Now you're doing it after I've been establishing trying to yourself. Do that, though. The, look, well, you guys establishing myself look, as what? Establishing myself as what? I'm look, I'm not gonna stand here and be ganged up on. Okay? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to gang up on you. Stop! This is my rehearsal room and I am in charge, okay? Please. Freeze. Please. Done. Please. Without us you wouldn't have a rehearsal room. Well, that was, was that okay? Okay. Okay. Let's, let's see. Let's see how that goes. See how that goes. It's my rehearsal room. It's done. Now, this wouldn't Don't. be a rehearsal room without us, and you know that. I, well, yeah. We we got you this job. You wouldn't have this job if we didn't Whoa. suggest that you teach here. <laughs> we got you this job. Yes, we did. We said, "Oh, David's great." Now I'm kind of regretting making uh, having going to some. Okay. Say you know what? You know what? Go back to work. Go back to rehearsal. All right. And, and this this conversation is over. Okay. Done. Well, I mean, he has a point. You just stop. It's done. All righty. So, <laughs> what's been going on there? Maybe you don't hate Mike after all. Maybe you don't. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we didn't necessarily solve that one. Um, I think we well, I think we're. Uh, one, well, we have about five minutes left, so maybe we could kind of chat. We yeah. could kind of reflect on what we saw today and come up with some, some, uh, uh, just reflect. Come up with some action items for things that we might concrete things we might be able to do. What are some tiny things that maybe worked? What were some ideas that maybe made things a little bit better, even if there were no magical solutions? So um, yeah, let's have a little. Cool. Grab, some, yeah. grab some chairs. One hand over here. I see two hands over here. So let's, let's start there. And then we'll get to you guys we, over here. I thought we were sitting in the middle. Yeah. We, can, we can just all kind of talk. We'll all sit around. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, so who's, who's the first name? Right over there. Yes. Uh, hi. My name is Susanna. This is my first time to see, to watch the live theater. I am so surprised. I'm very moved about your performance. Oh, I'm really, thank you so much. I really I feel deeply connected because I, as a foreigner, I encounter my corporation every day mm -hmm. while working at the hospital. 
but I never realized that I can express my feelings or my statement to those kind of my corporation. Usually you just feel like, oh, just ignore it. Yeah, totally. So keep your days, move on. Mm. And mm. I feel the power of theater to relate your real life. Even though you just play a very simple, small things, but actually it's quite even practical and real to our daily lives. And I really appreciate your dedication and uh, bringing up this play to us. Thank, Thank you. you. A huge problem in a lot of these situations is that they come from a place of ignorance where often the person doing the microaggression doesn't realize what they're doing or doesn't even think they're saying anything wrong. Right. So obviously when somebody calls them out on it, they feel they're being attacked because I didn't do anything wrong. Why are they getting angry at me for? And like obviously, I mean, sometimes they might reflect and be like, huh, maybe doing something wrong. But usually they get defensive and then it just like goes into like a downward spiral of like, just like get, getting nowhere. Yeah. So obviously, yeah, in some situations you can't really change their mind. They have to like, they have to have that moment where they realize, hey, we may be on the problem here. So yeah, in a lot of situations you can't really, just, there's no good ending usually. Yeah, Yeah, so. and that's actually, I, I sorry, I, I know I did a lot of talking, but that, I, as the, the jerk in the room, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, I was just never going to lose. Yeah, correct. Right. I was just never going to lose. I was always going to come up with some, power does not give way easily. I, I was just not, I was always going to have something to say. But there were things that people said that I knew hit me. I, I didn't let it on, but I knew that it hit me. And so I just needed to, and I think that that was really interesting stepping into that because I think that is true to life. People hear things and they might not reveal that they were hit by it, but they were. Maybe that's a little seed that'll yeah. I grow, think I was you know? saying that a lot of people do. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> I think something that a lot of people do when they realize they're in the wrong, they try to manipulate the situation. So like somebody will try to explain their side and they're like completely like, innocent and they're like, hey, like this is how I feel about what you're saying about me. And then they turn around and like you're trying to make me feel like I'm a bad person, like I'm not trying to do this. And then the other person feels guilty and they feel like, you know what, they weren't really trying to hurt me because they're manipulated and they feel like it's true. It's like they're not trying to hurt me. Right. It's fine, so they don't say anything. So I was, you know, Lauren and I have a hive mind today. Because <laughs> my brain's gone, so I need other people to help me. But um, I, I was thinking, this sort of situation, as opposed to where it's somebody, like, in a coffee shop or whatever, like, you don't know, this is, like, an ongoing relationship. And, um, you know, I've certainly encountered that, where you then have an opportunity, as an ally, to, um, to when it's de-escalated, it's not in the middle of the situation, for me to take David aside, because clearly we have a lot to talk about, <laughs> and, um, and, and talk in a, you know, because Lauren was talking about you get defensive immediately, to just be like, hey, can we talk about something that, you know, that, you know, I, you know, saw that, you know, just really bothered me, and, and then it's not in front of an audience, it's not with other stuff going on, it's not, you know, like that fight or flight reptilian brain thing going. Um, I just think that for this kind of situation where there is an ongoing relationship that, um, you know, like if Mike had taken you aside separately, being like, I know I'm the golden boy. Mm. Let me just tell you, David, I didn't want to say anything there, but you know, I really do notice it. I know you don't mean it, mm. but I really do notice a difference in the way we get treated. If he said that in your office, because you know, he obviously goes to office hours because he's a golden boy, then, um, <laughs> then he, um, you, know, you would take that very differently than the two of them being in your face, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, but, but the question is, would he, right? I don't know. The that's the you know. The first role of an time ally. we tried that scene, he actually agreed with David. So. Well, I know that's because that. Yeah, was, but that was brilliant. I feel yeah. yeah. And I feel <laughs> like if like I was in that position, like would I want to jeopardize my yeah. spot with David mm -hmm. too? Yeah. 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 All right. So we're just about out of time. So just a couple more. Uh, yeah. yeah. So. so you go. There we go. <laughs> so my my son currently is going through something very similar. He's in high school, and um, so I needed him to self-advocate for himself, in a sense, because there's not going to always be an opportunity where there is going to be an ally. Mm -hmm. um, what was interesting by it is because I did we did ask the question because he's very introverted and quiet. Had something him and his professor or teacher had something to say. He's, he's in high school, uh, junior high school, and and all of a sudden he was written insubordinate, got his attention, but it doesn't happen to anyone else in the course. 
and he's a straight A student, so you know, it's a good student, does well. I'm not saying he's an angel, because you know, this, you know, students are students and they have it. But in that moment, he was like, he wanted to bring in his classmates to help them as allies. And I, so I, you know, framed the question is, through their lens, are they going to feel the same exact way that you feel, and who are they? Do they identify as you? Are they the same? Like, do they see things the same way as yeah. you? And then that really caught him because then he didn't. He he couldn't really give me an answer. He just thought, well, my friends are going to just agree. But the, what was um, interesting about your reaction immediately wasn't what you really said. Was your body language when you kind of shrugged your shoulders? And uh, and being an educator, and we sometimes when you frame the situation and you ask a lot of people, hey, what happened here? A lot of times you see students shrug their shoulders because they don't want to conflict with that power structure, right? And that's what a lot of times it's hard for people to kind of advocate for one another and, and, and do those things because it, be, it becomes now tough on you because now you're like, holy oh, crap, what's going to happen to me if I go against this power structure? Am I going to lose my lead role because I am the star of the class, you know? And that does happen. I think uh, what kind of both of you were talking about is there's definitely power in numbers and as someone who's definitely been like picked on before, it was always kind of like, oh, why can't someone come and help me? Because like if someone who is like more traditionally liked amongst even the faculty, faculty members definitely have prejudice too. But we won't go into that. Um, it was it made things significantly easier. And so now if I see someone in that situation where they're being talked down to, whether it be because as a cis white person, I have privilege of people do. And you have to be aware of the privileges that you have and use them to help the people that don't. Like, is, I always think to myself, act as you would as the most, um, like the least, the person who has the least privilege. Like, always keep them in mind with what you do. So I think we're just about at the end of our time here. We're actually a little bit over. Um, so thank you all so much for this exploration. I know it's. Uh, Uncomfortable subject matter is uncomfortable for me. Uh, <laughs> uncomfortable for these brave students who were. Uh, this was a very personal exploration of these issues. So please give these students a round of applause. <laughs> really, really extraordinary to collaborate with them and be able to act with them. So thank you all so much, and uh, uh, thank you to Angen. Um, thank you and very, very much. and uh, more. Theater, more of these, uh, more of these events in the future. Please come see our town, and please continue to participate, and please continue to talk to me about ways to collaborate and ways to bring theater into all the different uh, activities and areas of the college. This is a tool for all of us to use. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.